Lapia, who would be talking to Nigerians, telling Nigerians what she is doing in that uh, sector. So, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to now invite the Honorable Minister of Environment to please come and tell Nigerians what she is doing in her sector. Honorable Minister. I'm sure you must be wondering where are we going to start from? Our environment? Our environment? Very good. Uh, sitting there and listening attentively, I was wondering, I heard so many words, so many large figures. I heard a 9.3 billion, I heard a 77 billion, I heard the word 80 million dollars. Plenty of production from Akin and his colleague. Plenty of moving animals from the north and the south. And I said to myself, well, I hope you all are here to listen. That the duty of the Federal Ministry of Environment is to make all those things happen. <laughs> yes. Is to make those things happen. So. Let's see how do we make those things happen. We have to create the enabling environment. First of all, agriculture. We need the farmers to remain back on land so that there's no desertification and so that Akin can achieve his goals. What do we need in health? We need waters, clean water, not stagnant water so that we can roll back malaria. We need peace so that we can achieve the Millennium Development Goals in education, so that people can stay back. In works, we need structures that are environmentally compliant, so that we don't have houses falling over people. We also need in information, smiling faces, so that my brother, the Minister of Information, will have less talking to do. And this, this, is the big task and this is the task of ensuring that the transformation agenda i would not say of mr president i would say driven by mr president for nigerians is achieved the honorable minister of information mr labram maku dr akim wimi and his co-pilots i'm glad um, well that makes two non-doctors in the house. <laughs> Dr. Bukartijani, my permanent secretary, Mr. Tai Haruna. Uh, permanent secretary again, my one-time permanent secretary, Udu Shote, and Mrs. Ajani of the Ministry of Information, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. In the opening remarks, Mr. Labaran Mahu, the Honorable Minister, said, our job is to make this happen. And I want to stay, say that to whom much is given, much is always expected. We have the binding role, as I earlier said. If you look at what we have on the screens, can you go back a little bit? You will see the major challenges. That's the agricultural transformation agenda. Can you go back to the challenges there first? Well, the scenario of what we call our environment today in the country. Is someone having his fingers on the screen, on the slides? I'll continue. Environment. Well, the transformation of this country is based on certain parameters. We need to achieve a clean diversity. We need also to provide effective and efficient administrative network for environmental management, in addition to articulating and enforcing environmental laws. 
as well as ensuring environmental awareness. Uh, the national anthem came before my arrival, and I want to state here, with due apology to all of you, that I was drafted to address an environmental issue in Akwaibom, and the plane was one hour, 20 minutes late in taking off. So that's why I came before the national anthem. I hope that is well understood, and I hope I'm pardoned for that. Let's start with erosion. Over the years, the southeastern part of this country, maybe I should stop and wait for the slides. Don't you think so? OK. There seems to be a major environmental challenge, and I'm capable of handling it. Let's address erosion. In the southeastern part of this country, we've been constantly challenged over the years by major erosion occurrences. Some of these become even landslides. We have, for example, the Nanka erosion site, which has been abandoned for over three decades by subsequent governments. On assumption of duty, Mr. President, in his desire to transform the environment, decided to address these major issues. Erosion and flood control. Uh, the minister mentioned flood. Again, I want to say that, interestingly, this is the most important ministry in the country in spite of all the skepticism that goes with the environment. Like I opened in my opening remarks, little or no goal can be achieved effectively without due consideration to the environment. Uh, the efforts of the Ministry of Agriculture and indeed all other ministries will only come to fruition hopefully and prayerfully that we do not have any occurrences of flood, desertification, or any other thing that would hamper the achievement of these goals. In restoring uh, erosion sites, the federal government of Nigeria through the ministry has successfully worked on 64 erosion and flood control projects executed nationwide with about 12 of them not yet completed, but in the process of completion. We have three major uh, projects that are already completed and are due for commissioning, which are the Nekede Erosion, Gunny Erosion Control in Uwere, the St. Kizzi, one of his hallmarks is that of humility and keeping to his promise. And I think that is testimony to good leadership traits. The president promised to address the issue of erosion in the southeast. And today I stand before you to say that gladly the Ministry of Environment has successfully supervised the execution of the 15 major erosion projects. The major challenge we have is that of Nanka. And to this effect, the World Bank has come up with a 500 million dollar facility that will be used over a period of three years to address the enormous challenge of the Nanka and Ojoto sites, Oko sites of the drain. If you look on the board, you see some of the intervention sites. Next slide. That's Nekede. Next slide. That's St. Kizito, before and after. That's Abekuta before and after. Next slide. We'll talk about the flood at a much higher level, a uh, broader sense. So we go to the next slide. Next slide. The installation of functional flood early warning systems. Uh, last year, one of the greatest challenges the country faced was that of flooding. 
I want to say that the international community has appreciated the immense, the immense effective structures that we have put in place. The response to the flooding in 2012 has been acknowledged worldwide. And you do know that these are natural, there could be natural causes, but as I make my presentation, we'll also be talking about the human forces that usually contribute to this. We go to the next slide. Installed in over 500 locations across the country. The map on the screen shows the location of these flood early warning systems. We have a community-based uh, community early warning system which people can access. They could do the reading, which we have trained these communities. They can read and they alert us and the local governments as to the impending floods. And I must tell you that if these things were not in place, what we witnessed last year would have been more catastrophic. I'm glad also to say that the ministry has on the web a digitalized flood early warning system, a website that tells you what is going to happen in your community. Now, because we are environment and because we are down to earth, because when you talk about issues of environment, it's either you're getting it right or everybody is suffering the consequence. Therefore, these issues are community-based issues. So what have we done? We have involved communities in monitoring their immediate environment so that we can have little or less impacts. Now, if we go to the next slide, there you see pictures of what these uh, machines look like, which we have install installed across the country. That is just one in Paris State, in Lafayette. The next slide is addressing desertification control and forest management. The Federal Ministry of Environment implemented in 11 frontline states of Adamawa, Bauchi, Gwambe, Kebi, Sokoto, Zamfara, Kazina, Jigawa, Yobe, and Borno states. The Great Green World Program is a program that is geared towards fighting the encroachment of the desert. It is a regional program involving 42 local governments in the country. Why are we doing this? I'll tell you. When the rains came in 2012, we realized, we representing Nigerians, that many people didn't listen as they should to us. Because when the rains began in the, at the top northern part of the country, a lot of us felt that we were just raising unnecessary alarm because perhaps these people are not used to seeing that kind of rain. But of course, rain or environmental issues, flooding cuts across geographical expressions. Eventually, the rain uh, wash off water, rain water, of course, had to find its level. Usually, the level will be the lower part. And consequently, everybody was involved. So what I am saying today, I am saying it to you not because we are involved, but because all of us are involved and all of us should be concerned. And I think Mr. President, by his reaction, by his contribution, by his concentration on these issues have made a significant difference. We have in this effort rehabilitated 225,000 hectares of lands. It involves a lot of emphasis, just like the President directed us, consequently, that Nigerians need to understand. And one of the greatest achievements so far of the Federal Ministry of Environment is raising awareness for the environment now more than ever before. We have been, thank you, we've been involved in promotion of alternative sources of energy. You see a number of things before me. I'll be talking about that at the later part of this presentation as well as promoting dryland agricultural technology 
Of course, this will be the purview of the Federal Minister of Agriculture. But in my opening remarks, going back again, I did say that we are involved in aviation, in education, in agriculture, in water resources. Environment is a major index of success. We go to the next slide, please. That's the picture of the proposed green wall. Uh, can you hold there? What you see there, the dark green line, is the root of the regional program. But down that route, there are already desert desertificated states there. The route is at the apex of the map, if you look at it properly. But what you see there in light green and the yellow show acute desertification. Already the 11 frontline states are facing enormous challenges. And this has led to a lot of migration. I am sure Akin would have enjoyed the presence of many farmers in Katsina, Kebi, Sokoto, and surprisingly and sadly too, the next state facing the threat of desertification is my state, Kaduna State. Yes, and you can imagine how close Kaduna is to Abuja and to Kogi State and to Kwara State. Reason being that most of the people in the map you see there, most of the people in the areas painted green and yellow have moved down towards my state to make, to collect firewood. This is the next threat. And as we say, these things are going to continue moving unless and until something is done about it. Therefore, we have, like I said, tried hard and we are working harder. So far, we have established only 10 hectares of woodlot plantation in Gombe State and in Kazina State. We have established 55 hectare community woodlots in Kano. We have in Cross River State, we have in Kazina, Kogi, and some parts of Ogun State. Sometimes you wonder, are some of these states not having vegetation? Of course they are, but they're not having the kind of wood that is used for cooking. And so, people come out to where they can find these things, and when they hew the wood, the consequence is enormous. There is little or no control to flooding. Look at the next uh, slide, stabilization of active dunes. The first slide you see here is a village that once existed. A village that once existed. This is just the top of the top photograph you see. Around it are seven other villages. All the inhabitants have been compelled to move out because there is nothing they can do. Those are sand dunes that are coming. That is Borno State. And you can imagine, we all know what we're facing in that part of the country. People are compelled to move. And when they move, they move somewhere. And when they go somewhere, somebody is uncomfortable. Because one space for one is made one space for four. And of course, those are environmental challenges. The 15 hectares of stabilized areas of active dunes is in Gudumbali. For want of, of time, we would have shown you more than 50 of these enormous challenges that we have. From Daura to Borno State, from Kebi, Kazina, we have major challenges of people living in the middle of nowhere. And something has to be done about it. You look at the green model village, we try to set up villages. We first of all try to restore the degradation of the land, and then we try to set up small model villages where we can assist them to use well, except you're able to provide water. And for us to restore degraded land, we also need water. It will surprise you, honorable ministers, that we have a lot of oasis in Nigeria. I am sure Akin will see many more in the course of his visits. I am sure that Dr. Booker, I'm not telling him a story. He incidentally comes from a place where these challenges are household 
uh, occurrence. Can we go back to that first, that other one, please? Now, if you look at the oasis, there is a village called Yusifari in Yobe State. There's Yusifari and there, there's also Unisari. These areas are areas where before now, people have to move six kilometers to fetch 50 liters, liter jerry can of water. Don't ask me the quality of water. Don't ask. You can imagine what that happens. So these are environmental challenges that we would have to face. Then again, coming to provision of water or restoring the degraded sites. Where are you going to get diesel to take to such areas? How? Where is the means of transportation? Therefore, we are compelled again to look at nature, look at what the environment provides for us. And consequently, we rely more on God's own sunlight, using the power of solar, the power of the sun, to provide these alternatives. We have to because it is the only way that we can restore degraded lands. We cannot take water to that place, we must. So we are constantly working with the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, with the river basins, and with all relevant NDAs so that we can achieve our goal. Can we move to the next slide? There is a list of other areas of intervention in various states across the nation. Next slide. Management of forest reserves. Again, over the years, we have been abusing the environment. I have the privilege of flying across one of only six forest reserves left in the entire world, the one in Cross River State. And there we were told by the governor, Governor Lee Limoke, that sometimes you can walk for a quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, without seeing sunlight. And the world is so appreciative of Nigeria's ability to retain that forest reserve. I want to congratulate us and to inform all Nigerians that the United Nations has long approved, in the last two years, a year ago, we got approval for a Red Plus University in Nigeria because of our efforts at maintaining that forest. In year 2012, early in 2012, we also won a $4 million grant from the United Nations Environmental Agency for our efforts on the forest reserves. I think that needs a big round of applause. It is not about the money, it is about the ability of Nigerians to respect the environment. And I hope you listened. One out of six in the entire world. This is something that you hardly can ever find because this is something that God gave us as a country and the least we can do is to protect it. You look at that page, the last slide, you see a list, no go back please, management of forest reserves. Here running down integrated management of invasive and aquatic weeds in 45 communities. I would give you the details should anybody require that because like I said in environment is either you have it or you don't. It's either there's flooding or there's none. And on and on we have already for want of efficiency and effectiveness we succeeded in having a GIS facility in Abuja. This is the first of its kind in the last 20 years, and I think that requires a round of applause. When I was growing up, and when many of you were growing up, I'm sure you can recall what is to be called government uh, reserved. In, in my language, we call it Gandundaji. These are areas that government has delineated, and nobody can go in to either farm or to hew wood or to plant any other thing 
outside the protection of that environment. Those areas are supposed to ensure that we have cleaner air, that pollution is addressed, that we save biodiversity. Today, driving on these roads, you have Nigerians having the audacity to even take their machines there and cut wood without recourse to any government. I look at the next slide. We talk about pollution and sanitation. Pollution. We all know what has been happening in this country before the transformation agenda of Mr. President. It is not unusual to go on our highways and you find a young man who has just decided he needs to be noticed. He removes the exhaust pipe of his motorcycle and he goes boom all through town and he thinks he is impressing some people. What we inhale, what we inhale is definitely hazardous to health. The enormous amount of money put in the health sector can only be meaningful if and only if we're able to fight such areas. Look at the screen, you're too fast. Look at the screen please as I speak and perhaps you will pick much more of what I am trying to express to you. You're too fast. The establishment of integrated waste management. Over the years, we found out that a lot of wealth is being lost by citizens of this country. The management of waste is one area where people can make very, very clean money. Very clean money with little or no stress. Reason being one, that the raw material is readily available. We produce over 3 million tons of refuse every year, and these are not recycled. In areas where we have designated dump sites, they are dumped and left there. In areas where there are no designated dump sites, they are thrown out on the streets. When the water comes through rainfall, it is expected that they will be washed off. But the question is, washed off to where? washed off into our drainages to create more problems. Therefore, challenges such as waste management are challenges that this transformation agenda has tried to address. So far we have pilot projects at Ilokun and Emirin in Adoekiti, as well as Rumopolu Eliozu in Potakot River State. In, cross, in Upper Ibom State, while on my way out today, I had the privilege of seeing very briefly one of the recycling plants which is used to recycle the very popular, depending on what part of the divide you are, pure water sachets. These are environmental issues that need to be addressed. Uh, Dr. Akin, if we have a lot of materials that are not biodegradable, I am sure it will affect the quality of what you have on your farm. It will make farming very difficult. These are issues that the transformation agenda of Mr. President are addressing. We must find ways of recycling or substituting materials that are not biodegradable with materials that are degradable. A few days ago, a few days, days ago, someone said to me, Honorable Minister, you said we're not going to use pure water sachets again. Do you want to take us out of business? No. Water is life. Nobody will take you out of business. This government is a government of putting people in business. This is a government of job creation. It is a government that ensures... It is a government that wants people to survive, but it is also a government that wants you to survive in a healthy and wealthy environment. What I said was this, that it is time, look at the screen, that people begin to realize that they can create wealth. We have 
coded dustbins. You can see on the screen, in summer, we started, of course, to even get the elites to buy the idea that there's a need for you to separate your refuse, your waste. And if you do that, it will be so easy. I am glad to say that over the years, in the last two years in particular, we have seen an improved performance in the area of recycling of metal. I'm sure you will agree with me that you hardly see old buckets and old kettles and old uh, pot, uh, pans and saucers as you used to do when we were young. I know that the metal called butter, the kettle that is used, is so expensive because these metals are valuable. So we have a lot of metal recycling going on in areas like Kano, Lagos, and so on. What we are saying is that the average Nigerian can also make money by just coding your refuse. Don't throw anything like this, like we see on the screen. Just don't throw anything on the road because everything has meaning. And this is the transformation we're driving. We can produce organic fertilizer just like uh, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture has said, we can also produce inorganic fertilizer. Of course, we have so much. Look at what is happening. That's refuse. Um, but that is money. Imagine, what would you do if you imagine your state capital looking like Abuja? Every state capital, every town, every village can look like Abuja and it is happening. Thank you. Now, if establishment of integrated waste, the transformation agenda is laying emphasis, greater emphasis on the need to recycle our products. So, so far, if you look at the slide, you will see less burnt projects. Are you ahead of me? You will see, uh, let go back a bit. Less bond for clean earth project in Kano. This we have handed over to the government of Kano State. We have three in the southwestern part of this country, two in the south south, and we're working on four more. What we are saying is that environment, as we know, is on the concurrent list. Because it is on the concurrent list, states and local governments as well as individuals have a very prominent role to play so when we initiate when we draw or we formulate policies we try to sell the idea it's not about government doing everything it's about transforming the minds the thoughts and the attitudes of people with regards to environmental issues next slide Again here we're talking about establishment of waste to wealth plants and I'm glad to inform you that if you look at the right hand side you'll see a demonstration waste control project in River State down you see another one by your left in Equity State those are the ones I mentioned we also have established waste to wealth no don't tell me five minutes please Waste to wealth plants continued. The Federal Research Institute has developed a system for conversion of wood, wood waste to ceiling boards and floor tiles. I'm sure that you know, if you don't, please listen. Everything that you have used in life has some meaning. It can be recycled. And for some of us, we'll even try recycling our age, just for convenience. So, we go to the next slide. This is talking about environment again. What have we done? Under the leadership of President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, we have said that the beautiful people called Nigerians should live in a very beautiful environment. Before now, we used to have the Wale Wales, the Dubagaris, and these were people that could even go as far as getting into your kitchen and into your bedroom. Today, we are bringing them back. We have brought them back in the last two years. But I think we
we need to clap for Mr. President for that. A loud applause. Thank you. We have brought them back, but what is happening? What is happening is that states and local governments need to participate in greater ways. Because again, this is on the concurrent list. I have the next slide which shows the graph. It might interest you to know, perhaps if you look closely, you'll find where your state stands. Whereas in Lagos State, we have 620 such environmental health workers. We only have 14 in Sokoto. We have 31 in Zamfara. We have 208 in Bielsa. And we have a policy formulated that would ensure that environmental issues are addressed by professionally trained personnel. There are health schools of health technology across the states. These schools of health technology are set up to train this kind of workers to ensure that the council meets the objectives for which environmental protection agencies are set up. Here again, we want to appreciate the fact that this government has made a difference. You should be asking yourself, from the time you knew Wale Wale and Dubagaris, what happened to them? Why did past governments allow that to just die? And this is why today we have the environmental challenges that we have. Because at that time we didn't have people just washing or uh, sweeping their stalls, shops and houses, and coming onto the major streets to put everything right into a drainage system. We didn't have that because there were people watching. So again, the federal government is saying, these people are back, and I think that is a big and laudable achievement. <laughs> the next slide, we have trained and certified 200, uh, 200 environmental health officers for employment on the request of Jigawa State. We have registered 366 health officers. We have organized and coordinated as well as administered 2,000 on 2,917 health professionals across the country. Of course, those of you who are very current know that even a public hearing was held in the House of Representatives. This is also testimony to the interest that the environment attracts. If you look at that picture, you'll see how nicely dressed they, dressed they were and they are always. Now let us look at the continuation of the pollution challenges that we have had. What have we done? Uh, the, the whole world has been talking about lead poisoning in Zamfara. Unfortunately, there's also lead mining going on in other parts of the country, Ebonyi and Kogi states. And these lead, when it goes into the brain, and I am free to say that because this has been affirmed by the Minister of Health. It settles in the brain. And because it settles in the brain, no child who has been so affected can perform above average. It has a cognit negative cognitive impact. Again, this was overlooked. When the President came, he said no. We need to transform the way and manner that this is done. You cannot have lead, gold, or any other uh, such blessings from God and turn it into a curse. So through the Federal Ministry of Environment, we remediated 430 lead poisoned homes. The remediation is mechanical and very professional. It is such that even the walls had to be scraped in these homes. Before then, every day, at least six hourly, you record the death of a child in those communities in Zamfara State. I am sure uh, Labaram Maku, the Honorable Minister, will give testimony to this because he was with me in Bajega. And going through that, we also witnessed the enormous abuse of the environment with a lot of trees felled so that when the air blows 
it is, there is nothing that serves as a windbreaker. And again, diseases are carried on and on. We're rolling back malaria. We are trying as a Ministry of Environment to ensure that the monies put in that sector make meaning. We're trying to work hard to ensure that investment in agriculture achieves desired, achieves desired goals. We remediated four hectares of lead poisoned areas. They have an industrial area. Before the transformation agenda, there were about 7,000 machines. It was a real industrial area. And they would be there without gloves, without anything, just mining. And people come and pay pittance to these people and leave. It's like what the Honorable Minister of Agriculture said about rice, about cocoa. We are such a country that we can do this in a manner that will fetch us a lot of revenue and will create better jobs. And the Federal Ministry of Environment is working hard because the government under President Goodluck Jonathan wants things to be done right. We look at the next slide, we're talking of pollution. Can we finish that without talking about oil pollution? No. So again here, what you have there is the distribution of polluted sites by oil companies. We have series one, which is the number of spill impacted incident sites. That is the one in black. And then we have series two, number of remediated sites. Through our agency, the National uh, Oil Spill and Remediation a Agency, we have worked very hard. You may find that this is still lingering, but then ask yourself, in all the years that Nigeria has existed, from the time that oil was found, from the time that these pollutions have been going on across the country, what has been done? I want everyone here to applaud the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The UNEP report was not kept. Consequence upon the UNEP report, we also have the high prep, which the Federal Ministry of uh, Petroleum is working hard on. We have the National Oil Agency, like I said, and here you see the very big companies that we're involved in. In spite of all the challenges, in, in spite of the political exigencies, we have been able to remediate a very large portion of the polluted areas, particularly in the Niger Delta. As long as oil is sought, explored, there would be spills, but this should not be a way of life. There would be, sometimes we have accidents, that we understand. But where these large corporations go to think and do what they think they would and what they will not do in their country, we have said this is not acceptable. We have very <laughs> stringent fines that we have put on them. But the issue is not about fining, the issue is about stopping, avoiding a spillage as long and as best as you can. Again, there's another one which is in Kaduna, which we're working hard on and should be completed before the air runs out. That is the sludge pits at the Kaduna refinery. We realized, true to type, that when, we, when, the, when the people working on it removed the sludge, suddenly someone came or some people came to say, please sell the sludge to us. What am I saying? I'm saying that everything we think is useless, as far as the environment is concerned, is a source of wealth. And then we said, why are you coming now to say, sell the sludge to us? What were you doing all these years? Watching the sludge there and increasing it by the day. These are the challenges, but these are the successes also that have been achieved in addressing these major challenges. We look at clean energy initiatives. Here, we have a number of acquisition centers. As always, the Minister of Agriculture said the best farmers are women, and so are the best 
household keepers. Of course, they are endowed. They are also the best energy savers. And I tell you, women are the best economists in the world. And again, they are the best environmentalists. Little wonder that Mr. President has given them key ministries in his administration. Today, we have registered close to one million women nationwide for a program which is called RUES. RUES stands for Rural Women Energy and Security Program in conjunction with the Bank of Industry. This is in partnership with other renewable energy manufacturers such as Simba, Wonderbag Nigeria, Banagas, some NGOs, and a lot of CBOs. I think I need to pause here and mention something of great significance. Again, one of the major achievements in the environment sector under President Goodluck Jonathan is that more people are coming into the environment sector. We have more NGOs, we have more people getting interested in the environment. If anything, awareness has been created. And we know that knowledge is power. So we are creating, we have succeeded in creating a knowledge-based ministry where people can access, where we can help people to make wealth. So RUES is not only for the women anyway. If the men want to, they can apply. <laughs> Already we have provided over 2,000 wonder bags and we're still in the proce process of providing additional wonder bags. As I make my presentation, uh, you know women can be something else too. Someone said to me, it's five minutes. I said, well, agriculture can only work if the environment is tidy. So make it 10 minutes, please. Thank you. In any case, I will still speed off. I will speed. The, we have retrofitted some houses in Mutumbiu Gasol in Taraba State as well as some secondary schools. Can we go to the next slide? What you see in the next picture quickly? Next slide. What is happening? I'm sure the Minister of Information is environmentally friendly. We go to the mitigation of climate change. We all know that climate change is a reality now. For those doubting Thomases, I'm sure they know now more than ever before, from the rains of last year, that climate change has come to stay. Areas like Jigawa State, Jigawa is a word that is synonymous in Hausa with stony area. Areas like Jigawa experienced flooding last year. So did the Delta and so did the rivers and Anambra states, uh, state areas. So what we are saying is that Nigeria, working in close partnership with the international community, under the Durban platform, at the conference in 2011, as well as the one held in Doha, is addressing major challenges that have to do with climate change. We are addressing issues of clean development mechanism across the country. We have several jobs created, and we're working and hoping that the Minister of Agriculture will help in getting us more carbon credits across the country. This is an area where there's so much wastage. We have succeeded in formulating the climate change policy. Nigeria never had one. We have a strategic action plan on that. We have also taken this to council and it has been approved. And this is the document that the World Bank and the United Nations have congratulated us and are working hard. Last week, I had the privilege of sitting with the World Bank country director to address issues towards the effect of climate change in Nigeria. Would climate change affect the achievements of the realization of Vision 202020? The answer is yes. It will unless and until environmental issues are well addressed. The government is addressing this through a strategic framework of action that has been followed logically. 
You may not find us talking about the billions, but I tell you, the enabling environment is more than you can imagine. You need the enabling environment to achieve all the desired goals. Promoting an adaptation to impacts of climate change will reduce flooding. The government has set up a framework under the leadership of the chairmanship of the Federal Minister of National Planning. We're working with NIMES, we have their prediction, what are we doing? We have seen the Federal Ministry of Water uh, Transport dredging smaller rivers across. We have stepped up sensitization. I'm sure a lot of you have heard what is happening now. Before now, nobody talks about the environment. Now we have jingles in both electronic and print media. We have jingles in electronic media and we have a lot of write-ups in the print media. We're talking about the need for advocacy, the need for compliance with laid down rules. 23 women in Naka and Kiado communities in Benue State have been taught compost, how to make compost for farming. I think Dr. Akin, you should say thank you to me for doing that. We, have, we continue to train farmers, particularly in these agro-based communities. We have set up a national climate change media network in Abuja. Climate change is a reality. The president appreciates that as an environmentalist. The Minister of Environment appreciates that, and so do the workers in the Federal Ministry of Environment. Because we say, our environment, our environment, our life, and that is the life of Dr. Aikin and that of Mr. Labaram Maku. We look at, uh, we go further, the environmental impact assessment, I'm winding up, environmental impact assessment. We have stepped up awareness in that. Before now, we have a lot of private sector uh, structures and programs that have not been properly done. I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate the contribution and support of the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Aviation. These two ministers complied with environmental expectations. Our Honourable Minister Stella did an environmental impact assessment on the airports that she's working on. And so did my friend Dr. Akin, way away from the United States. He called me to say, please kindly hasten, let's have the environmental impact assessment. Of course, the international community will not come in unless you have proper compliance with rules and regulations. I'm, I'm still speaking. Well, let's go to the next slide. Let's run through the slides. Since uh, okay. we run through the slides, that's what they said. Are we rushing? Okay. Biodiversity. I used to know what a vulture is. I'm sure you know what a vulture is, Miss, uh, our MC. Now our children and the grandchildren coming in, I'm not sure they know what vultures look like. Why? Biodiversity is being lost. When you cut trees, when you degrade the land, when you abuse the environment, you lose biodiversity. Some of the things we lose are some organisms that would ensure high productivity, high yield. These, again, are issues that the Federal Ministry of Environment is addressing through the national parks, biodiversity and ecotourism. Can we run through the slides? I'll do that in five minutes. Go on. We have earth dams, go on. What, what do we mean when we show this? Just hang on there. That's the hanging fruit, foot bridge at Okumu National Park in Benin, and it's the one on the right-hand side. It might interest you to know that the federal government has decided to privatize the national parks. Anybody interested out there in the private sector, please come over. Because we want to ensure productivity. We also want to ensure that people are in their jobs. And it might interest you that even for me, as the Minister of Environment, visiting one of the national parks, I was stunned to see how awesome we have, uh, how awesome these people are, the kind of things that we have in these national parks. Please pay a visit to any of the national parks in your state. We go on to enforcement of environmental laws, a major challenge. People ask me, 
Madam Minister, why is Nestra stealing companies? Why are you talking to the uh, communication, the, what do we call them? Telecom subscribe uh, providers, service providers. We're not sending anybody out of business. We're saying that for every practice in life, there is a rule. If you have a game, you have to play the game by the rules. The federal government, the transformation agenda, is transforming abuse of the environment. If you want to set up a base station, you set it, set it up based on, based on the regulations. Do not set up a base station that is close to the window, two, three feet, four feet, five feet away from the window of a pregnant woman, because these are not healthy. They are hazardous to the environment. We are working with the Road Safety Commission to check pollution on our roads. What kind of emission comes out from our uh, motorcycles, our vehicles, environmental offenses? How often are we going to wait for the importation of e-waste? We were here in Nigeria when we had the cocoa ship, the cocoa incidents. Now we have e-waste. Why would somebody use his computer across continents and then just bring it into Lagos and dump it and disappear? We said no. They were having a field day because they used to pay one million. Now the last ship we, we arrested, of course the committee is headed by Nestria, but there are custom officers, the custom seats on it, immigration is there, the police, and so many relevant agencies. Now that ship had to pay a 500 million, $500,000 bond. Can we clap for revenue generation and for enforcement of laws? We will not allow any country, the Ministry of Environment will not allow any country to use Nigeria as a dump site, whether for e-waste or for any other thing. So we insist that people, nations and other corporate bodies across the world must comply with environmental regulations. Uh, please run through. I don't know why I'm asked to run through, but I will continue running through to be cut off. We, we understand, okay, that uh, there are major issues that have to do with the ban on the use of two-stroke engines. We know that a lot of uh, fishermen use this. What we did is in the interest of everyone in the country. We need healthy fishermen. These two-stroke engines were out of use 30 years ago in the countries that produced them. 30 years ago, and they have been brought to Nigeria. The transformation agenda will not accept that. Let us look at the slide finally on advocacy and awareness. Finally. Hurry up, hurry up, please. Here, the World Environment Day. Next slide. We have emphasis gone. Our emphasis is on the need to stop wastage. When you eat, please you think, and when you think, you should save. When you save, you can recycle. Please keep your environment neat and tidy. I want to summarize only because I'm compelled to do so. But in a nutshell, our environment is our life. It's the life of every Nigerian. Productivity has a direct correlation with the nature of the environment. Agriculture, aviation, health, petroleum, education, any sector of the economy must be seen to address environmental issues. Thank you for listening. We want to thank uh, the Honorable Minister of Environment for talking to Nigerians and telling Nigerians what she